Hi, it's Lucy and today I'm going to be doing a reading vlog for the Bookie Trials Royal Weekender. So if you don't know what the Bookie Trials is, it's like another year-long thing, not a year-long readathon, but there are multiple events throughout the year and this event is the Royal Weekender. Basically there are eight prompts, uh, four of them are like not reading prompts, there are other things, and then four of them are reading prompts or team-based prompts, like whatever team you're on, you get those prompts, and one of them is also not a reading prompt, so there are three actual reading prompts. I'm on Team Scribe, and right now it's around 10.30. I just ate breakfast. I was gonna film this before I ate breakfast, but I was hungry, so yeah. Okay, so I got my bullet journal, and here's the spread. I think I'm gonna decorate it a little bit more a little later. Uh, just because it's kind of bare, and why not? The first prompt is Uncommon Paper, read an underrated book, and for this I will be reading Of Curses and Kisses by Sandhya Menon. I feel like there's no way to tell whether a book is underrated or overrated until you actually read it, so I'm just gonna count it. Does it really count? I don't know. But I haven't heard a lot of people talking about it, so if I do like it, then it will be underrated. If I hate it, then it won't be underrated, but how was I to know? Of Curses and Kisses will also count for another reading challenge, which is Sensational Scriptures. Read a book with calligraphy found on the cover. Uh, if you, you're looking at the cover right now and you will see that the kind of font it's in is kind of like some kind of script style font. Oh my god, the sun is really bright. Like, hopefully that helped with the sun a little bit. The last reading challenge is book binding and you are supposed to have found a book within a book. Okay, so this one is a little bit of a cheat, but I don't know. I'm going to be reading Wayward Sun by Rainbow Rowell. If you know anything about this book, which you probably do, it's pretty popular. This is the sequel to Carry On, and Carry On is a book or a fan fiction that was written in Fangirl. So that is a book within a book, I think. I don't know if technically I should be reading Fangirl, which I've already read, because that will have the book in a book, and this is just the book within a book, which isn't even in the book because it's a sequel that wasn't mentioned in that, in Fangirl either, but I'm still counting it because it started off that way, okay? Those are my two plans. I haven't started reading at all today. I'm also planning to finish When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie Mecklemore. I have like 30 pages left of that, and I just want to finish it. Um, I'm enjoying it, but it will not count for any of these challenges. And the last challenge that I forgot to mention that's like four scribes only is a full recipe, and you're supposed to bake something. My original plan for this challenge was to do like a mug cake. Um, I don't know if you've seen on the internet, a lot of people have recipes for like baked goods that you can make in a mug in the microwave. And I've been really enjoying doing that while I've been home lately because I love desserts and it makes you really evaluate whether you want that sweet thing or not um, because you have to then go out and make it and you only make enough for one serving. It's actually probably more than one serving, but like it's one enough for one time. You're not gonna save the mug. I've really been liking doing that. However, my microwave broke, which was so amazing for me. I don't know if you can fix it. I am not gonna bother. It was a $50 microwave from Walmart, so I did expect this to last a year and a half. I feel like it should have lasted a little bit longer though, but whatever, I've been using it a lot. Anyway, I bought a new microwave on Amazon. Allegedly, it will be coming on Sunday, but you know, Amazon is having shipping issues as is everyone else. So we'll see when it comes, but for now I can't use the microwave. Luckily, I also did do some grocery shopping and the grocery store that I go to does sell like baking pans and things. I got this like bread pan and I don't have anything to make bread. I just bought the pan because I'm not smart, but I have corn muffin mix that's been in my cabinet for quite a while. And you can make corn muffin into like a bread thing. So I'm gonna be baking that. <laughs> that was a very long winded story. There you go. Sorry if you hear my cat crying. He's always crying. I don't know, especially now. I think it's just cause I'm home and he's like, he hears me talking and he's like, I gotta talk too. I don't know. Um, and there are four more challenges that, once again, like I said, don't have reading elements to them. There's Oathmaker, which is to declare your TBR. I did that. Oh, I can check it off. I'll do that later. There is Tournament Ready, which is to join a competition. I do plan on doing that. I'll show you like my completed thing. There's like competitions on Twitter and I'm gonna do that. Um, Power Surge, which is to complete it. A two hour reading sprint, which I just realized I missed one, or there's one going on right now, so I've already missed half of it though. So we'll try for the next one. The last challenge, which I guess is reading related, but like not a specific reading prompt, is to complete a book. So those are all the reading challenges, all the challenges I need to complete. Those are the books I'm planning to read this weekend. 
Thank you for joining me. Let's get into it. I have to move my cat because he is once again somewhere he's not supposed to be. Tucker, what are you doing? Move. Get down. Get down. I cannot believe you. He's so fake. Okay, so I realized I cut off the uh, like reading montage a little too early. I stopped the video and then I started tearing up like three pages later. So yeah, you can't see anything. You didn't fall or anything, but I was definitely tearing up. The end of this book was so good. The book was good. I was a little worried that I wouldn't love it in the first half just because it is kind of a lot to get into and I've been reading it pretty slowly. But the second half really made up for it. I really liked it. I'm not going to talk too much about this because it's not really meant for this vlog. I just wanted to finish it, but it was really good. I'm going to give it five stars, I think. Yeah, now I'm going to start a book for this readathon. And yeah, and I did these two like pigtails in my hair. I think they're kind of cute. I like it better than the one ponytail, so we'll see. I'm 22% of the way through of Curses and Kisses. Right now, I started at like 11 or 12% of the way through, so I read about 10% because I have previously started this book and then I thought I was going to start over from the beginning, but then I just didn't feel like it. So that's what I've been doing for the past half an hour or so, however long I've been laying here, I don't know. And yeah, so my first impressions, I guess, on this book is that it's kind of weird. I don't know. It, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like satirical a little bit or what but it just feels a little oddly written like uh, a little overwritten if that makes sense like it feels like it's kind of making fun of YA characters but I'm not sure if it's actually making fun of YA characters or if it's just that generic I'm not sure also I'm not sure what time period it is supposed to be in or like what it's supposed to be in uh, oh the premise of this book is basically that this follows two characters it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling and they are at a boarding school and basically something happens. The Belle character, I guess, whose name is Jaya, comes to the boarding school with her sister. The Beast character has been going to that school. And basically the Beast character's family, the Beast character is named Grey, family believes to be have been cursed by Jaya's family. And Grey thinks something's going to happen to him on his 18th birthday. And then Jaya started to go to that school because Grey's family did something to her little sister and her master plan is basically to like make Grey fall in love with her and break his heart so that he feels bad I guess. When I read the actual synopsis I thought it was going to be like a fantasy because it's like a curse and everything but it reads more like a contemporary but the way that everyone is talking about like the royal family and everything seems way more serious than it should be um especially because like the Emersons aren't part of like the English royal family. Grey's family isn't like the English royal family they're like like a subsection of it or something I don't remember so just the way they're talking about it seems like like more fantasy like but the everything else seems more contemporary so I'm not sure what it's supposed to be uh so that's a little confusing and yeah those are all my thoughts on it so far I'm taking a break from reading right now because in like half an hour I'm supposed to join a video chat web call with some other booktubers because we're planning a readathon <sighs> okay I'm back um what did I say yeah I did all the stuff I said I was gonna do had the video call planning a readathon it's a secret maybe it's not a secret yet uh yeah it'll be a secret by the time you see this 
But yeah, stay tuned for that. And then after that, I just made myself some matcha green tea. Can you see it? Can you see it? Hopefully I don't spill it. Uh, a little bit, it's fine. Spoiler for my second channel, which by the way, I have a second channel if you're interested in that. It'll be linked down below. And I'm trying out the service called Daily Harvest. And the video for that won't be up by the time this video is up but it will be up soon after. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to that channel and you'll be notified when that goes up and you'll see it in your sub box and everything. I would really appreciate it. Um, also subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Uh, I feel like if you're considering subscribing to my second channel, you will have already subscribed to this channel, but just in case. Yeah, so while I was making the tea, I started listening to Wayward Son. I'm now like 20 minutes into the audiobook. I'm listening to the audiobook because it literally just came in from the library last night because God has finally smiled down upon me. This week has not been the greatest, I haven't talked about it, other than my microwave breaking, which I mentioned earlier, like that was bad. Some other annoying things happened this week. So finally God has smiled upon me and I got the audiobook just in time to listen to it for the readathon so now I can do things while still reading and actively contributing for the readathon, which is good. Yeah, I'm only 20 minutes into it. I realized I forgot the end of Carry On, so I think I'm gonna look up a synopsis or like a spoiler thingy for it because like I vaguely know what happens but I don't think I remember enough. So I'm gonna see if there's a recap or something. So I'm gonna find that, read that, and then go back to listening. I think I'm gonna either sit here and drink my tea and try and edit a video or sit here and drink my tea and listen to the audiobook while I clean up some. We'll see what happens. Sunday, March 28th, the second day of this readathon, and my cat is once again whining and complaining. Why? I don't know. He's just like that. Anyway, um, it's 9 a.m. I have been awake for a few hours now because my cat also wakes me up very early. It's so fun being a mom. Yeah, so I spent the morning goofing off, and then I did read for like an hour or so this morning, so now I am 40 or 38 percent of the way through hi thank you so much thank you can you move thank you excuse me but yeah i don't know what i was saying i'm 38 percent of the way through of curses and kisses so far i think if i weren't reading it for this readathon i would have dnf'd it um and i don't have other books off the top of my head that can complete the challenges that it's completing so i'm not going to dnf it but yeah right now it feels three stars. I kind of feel like I'm reading a parody, which is the biggest like issue I'm having. Like it just feels weird. I don't think it is supposed to be a parody, so it just feels weird. The dialogue that the characters are using, like it feels like it's supposed to be like kind of like a fantasy kind of stylized dialogue, like this is supposed to be like some kind of fantasy story, but the timeline seems like it's mostly present day. But then the way some of the characters are acting doesn't feel like present day. For example, the main character's sister is like the outcast. She's trying to do like individualist stuff and she's like really into robotics. And her sister, the main character is like, that is not for a proper lady. Like proper ladies don't do that. And it just, yeah, that's my cat. And it just feels really weird 
for an 18 year old to be discussing like what a proper lady is doing like not even 18 she's probably 17 she's a senior in high school so you'd be like oh proper women don't do robotics like i obviously i'm not in an indian royal family i'm not from india but it just feels odd the way it's being described uh, and it would make more sense if it was set in the past or something but it's not it doesn't seem like it is so it just feels weird and the way some of the characters talk like the actual dialogue is really off-putting for example someone says get them to argue uh name said almost immediately name is powerfully strident when she's angry about something who says that who talks like that what and just like other little things like that it feels really weird and the real parody part of it is how gray the male main character the beast is so like over the top like brooding bad guy in the way he's described like it feels like a parody but i think the book is being serious so not a huge fan of that so i think i'm probably gonna end up giving this three stars when i'm done with it but once again i'm only 38 percent of the way through it so it could change i don't know and i'm also 40 two percent of the way through wayward sun i'm listening to the audiobook i think i mentioned that i'm liking this a lot more than i am liking a person kisses and i think i might be enjoying this more than i like to carry on which is a lot to say because i was very annoyed by the existence of this book i don't think i told you guys what it's about but basically it's a sequel to carry on after the events of the first book the characters are in america and they're like doing stuff in america don't want to tell you too much but it's really interesting it's like not dissecting, but like really talking about like the after the happily ever after. Like it talks about how, oh, well, the hero won. And like in a regular book or like just like in most stories, the hero wins and then that's it. That's the end. Everyone lives happily ever after. We don't have to deal with the aftermath because that's where the story ends. But the care, I mean, characters aren't real people, but like in real life, the characters have to keep living after that and they have to deal with the fallout of everything that happens and what they did how that affects them and what happened to other people af affects them. And so we're dealing with that. And the first book, Carry On, kind of had the characters being more stereotypical tropes. And it kind of also dissects how the tropes like would play out in real people, you know? So I like that as well. And I'm enjoying this. I'm planning to clean up my apartment while I listen to more of Wayward Sun and wait for my breakfast to get here because yes, I did order DoorDash breakfast. Uh, I found this interesting New York style uh, deli kind of thing and they do make a good bacon and cheese. In my opinion, it's kind of salty, but whatever. And um, it's very overpriced, but supporting local business, yeah. And I just don't like cooking, okay? Leave me alone. I'm gonna go deal with my cat, bye. I am now 70% of the way through of Curses and Kisses. It is the same as what I said last time. Basically, uh, I'm probably going to give it three stars unless it ends amazingly. I kind of feel like I know where it's headed. There was a twist that I didn't quite expect, but I know it's going to be resolved. It's a contemporary romance. The dialogue continues to just be weird to me for what it's supposed to be. And someone made a mention about how the main character speaks and how it's odd, but other people talk like that too so it doesn't really mean anything to me that like calling attention to that one character talking a little differently 
and not quite right. I don't want to make it sound like I hate this book or something. It's fun, it's fine, but I don't, it's not doing a lot for me. On the other hand, Wayward Son, I still continue to be interested in it. I forgot what percentage of the way through I, I am in Wayward Son, but I'm listening to the audiobook and right now I'm listening at 2.2 times speed and I have about an hour and a half left of listening time. So whatever that would be. I know that there's gonna be like a big twist at the end that upset a lot of people before they found out there's gonna be a third book. So I'm waiting for that. I wonder what it's gonna be. I kind of think I know what it might be. I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, I think it's very interesting. The only thing, issue I guess, that I have, not issue, I don't know. Um, this book, we're learning more about the magical creatures in this world. I just don't think we know enough the way they talk about the creatures and the, I just don't think it's explained well enough. But other than that, I'm enjoying it. And now I wanted to do something. I have not completed a single challenge, I think. I've completed maybe one challenge. Technically I completed the read a book challenge or like finish a book challenge because I did finish When the Moon Was Ours yesterday, but that wasn't even for this. I did complete another challenge. I did a like sprint thing. It says to complete a two hour sprint, but the last sprints that they did were not two hours. It was like a little over an hour, but those were the only sprints that I could finagle my time into. So I'm counting it. Yeah, so that's it. And the, another thing is to complete a tournament. I was gonna do the first one, but there's another one that's like an online quiz. And so I wanted to do that with you guys. It's the author archery tournament. And so I'll read out the questions. I would uh, record my screen, but that seems like a lot of work. And so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Oh, they give you clues, and then you have to guess which author it is. So, red, black, and white cover, Stabby Girls for Londons. This is Victoria Schwab, and I'm so good. Ten points for you. One of the Queen's favorite authors, diverse portal fantasies, pen name, also Mira Grant, that's Sean and McGuire. I've never seen a picture of Sean and McGuire. Dandelion, toss a cone, horses all named Roach? What? Okay, so it's not... Neil Gaiman, because I think I would know. I have never heard of and Andrzej, I can't pronounce it, Andrzej Sapowski. Sip I've never heard of this author. And then the other two are Patrick Rothfuss and George R.R. R. Martin. I don't think it's George R.R. R. Martin just because I did read the first book in the Game of Thrones. What is that book called? The first book in the Game of Thrones series. Is it called the Game of Thrones? Whatever the first book is called. I did read that and I don't remember all the horses being named Roach, I think I would notice. So either the guy whose name I can't pronounce or Patrick Rothfuss. Let's go with Patrick Rothfuss. Yeah, I was right. Oh no, I was wrong. Oh well. Let's do four. World on top of a turtle. Christmas is called Hogswatch. Octarine, the color they created. Oh, this is Terry Pratchett. I recognize the world on top of a turtle. I have not read any of the Discworld series though. Yeah, I was right. No mourners, no funerals. This is Lee Bardugo. The other clues are Rotterdam, Amsterdam influences, Netflix series coming soon, Lee Bardugo. Seven is an important number. I open at the close. Robert Galbraith is a pseudonym. It's JK Rowling. Black author, seven figure debut, book advanced, West African Orisha fantasy. She had a seven figure book. It's tell me how to get me. It's she had a seven figure book. Of stabby, stabby, stabby. Never flinch, never. Okay, this is Jay Kristoff. Well, I'm pretty good at this. I only got that one thing wrong. And then nine, your two hearts, lost and forgotten city, necklaces made of teeth. Okay. Oh, it's Lainey Taylor. Necklaces made of teeth is the clue. Are these spoil? I don't. I don't think these are spoilers. And the last final shot. This is the last one. Doors, historical, purple prose. Wow. What? They have no names. I know who this is. It's January Lavoie, but I don't know what she looks like. So I'm cheating, okay? I'm admitting it. I just don't know what she looks like. Okay, I'm wrong. It's not January Lavoie because none of these people, I don't know which one it is. Um, eeny, meeny, miny. I'm going with that one. It's, I missed it. I wrong, I wrong. But I completed it. So I got, how many was, I missed two. So I don't think that's terrible. But yeah, I completed a tournament. Another thing checked off.
about what I uh, was reading. So yeah, I finished Wayward Son during the readathon. I have since finished Of Curses and Kisses, but I didn't finish it over the weekend. So I'm still gonna talk about it, but I'm not gonna count it as a book finish. So technically I only finished one book for the challenges. I finished six out of eight challenges, just the two reading challenges that I was using Of Curses and Kisses for. I obviously didn't complete because I didn't complete the book during the readathon. My review of Wayward Son, I think uh, what I said the last time I talked about it still stands. I enjoyed it. I think there were like two or three weeks where after this book ended, people were really mad about the ending of this book and I totally get it. I kind of think it was a cheap shot to have it that way just because they definitely knew that they were going to write the third book before they announced it and they might as well just have announced that they were doing a trilogy when they knew they were doing a trilogy. Just the ending of this book is obviously has a need for a last book. So I feel like that was like a cheap shot, but I did like it. I kind of liked the end. I'm looking forward to seeing where it all goes. I liked the exploration of all the topics that were uh, explored during this book. I've heard other people's complaints were that it was boring, uh, like the first half doesn't really have a plot. If you know my reading taste through like watching my channel, it doesn't really bother me when books don't have too much of a plot. As long as I'm interested, you know, as long as I'm interested in the characters and sometimes the characters are boring and then there's no plot so the book is boring. But for me, I thought the characters were interesting. I was intrigued to know more of their thoughts, more of what they were going through. So I didn't mind that the plot in the beginning was pretty weak. Like the second half of it did have a, more of a plot anyway. So I enjoyed it. I'm going to give this book four stars. That's my review of Wayward Son. I enjoyed it. I will be reading the third one whenever it comes out. And of Curses and Kisses, like I said, I didn't finish it during the readathon, but I have finished it. It's Wednesday now. I think I'm going to give it three stars. I think that's what I gave it on Goodreads. I still have to write my review for both of these books, actually. Yeah, of Curses and Kisses just was not for me. I thought it was kind of boring. I knew where it was ending, obviously, because it's a contemporary romance and I didn't care about the characters enough. I thought the dialogue was written really awkwardly. For both characters, I thought the characterization of other characters was really uh, flat. There was a side plot that I don't think I mentioned throughout the vlog that just didn't really make sense to me. Like there's like this not even love triangle thing. It's like a cheating plot line, okay? The other woman just keeps being the other woman and just like is not even justifying it to herself like she knows it's wrong and it's really weird the whole time the story's going it just didn't make sense to me i didn't like it and it seemed like it was supposed to be like a lesson like a know your worth kind of lesson but it felt like a little too on the nose sorry my heat is going on so i'm gonna wrap this up but yeah i just didn't really enjoy the book the romance wasn't that cute for me it was hate to love which normally i love but i just thought the characters were so flat and two-dimensional that it just did not work for me and yeah so three stars. Uh, those are the books that I read. I also finished When the Moon Was Ours. You'll hear more about that in my March wrap-up, which should be going up sometime soon. And that's the end of this readathon vlog. I had a lot of fun during the readathon. I wish I could have participated a little bit more, but I'm glad with the participation that I did do. Uh, thanks so much to Rachel and all her other hosts 
for hosting it and yeah that's the end of this video thank you so much for watching if you like this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up if you have any opinions about the books that i read during the vlog any opinion about anything i did during the vlog i really didn't do much but if you have any opinions <laughs> let me know if you took part in the readathon let me know how you did how was your experience subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I make more videos where I talk about books. Also in the description box I have my social media, my Twitter, my Goodreads, my Instagram where you can see pictures of my cat, and my second channel that I have recently started. So if you're interested in seeing more videos from me that aren't about books, check out that channel. Okay, bye. <laughs>